Arkansas's Anthony Black was one of the premier guard prospects in college basketball, and though his team had some ups and downs and unfortunate injury luck, he was able to showcase his game and ultimately help lead them to the Sweet 16. At 6'7", he's got legit passing skills, he can handle it, and is also a super intriguing defender. And while there are some questions about his potential role in the shooting, he'll look to join the recently growing number of big versatile playmakers who have had a ton of success in the NBA. Starting on the offensive side, AB is a natural passer and playmaker who is unselfish, aware of his options, and can find some unique passing angles and thread the needle at 6-7. He was good in transition, throwing hit aheads and pushing the pace. He really shined as a ball mover, making that extra pass in the half court and also making plays off of second side actions and some off of his own drives on dump offs and kickouts. I was also consistently impressed by his pace and ability to make plays in the pick and roll. He was patient, allowed things to develop, and also manipulated the defense to find his teammates. Now this is a spot where his scoring will determine the level he reaches and how much he'll do it in the NBA, but he can create good looks here. It wasn't crazy advanced in terms of reads or passes, but in whatever offensive role that he has, he's shown himself to be high level and is one of the better passers in the class. Four points in the game. Speaking of four. Arkansas. Good nice. pass. Wow. And the player said, Coach, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> At least he was honest. That was flat as soon as it left his hand. Nice pass on the team. It's been very good against the zone. Black drives. Finds Mitchell. Great player of the year, favorite or in the race, of course. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, what a catch. Nemhard tried to go 94 feet, couldn't convert. Numbers. Oh, cancel. Not a good pass that time from Wallace. Here's Davis ahead of the field. To the rebound. His ability to use his size, athleticism, and pace to get to the bucket in transition, some of the pick and roll, and against shifted defenses is a definite positive, even with some of the questions that are there in the half court. When he gets to that right hand and gets headed downhill, he's really tough to stop. He finished through contact well and drew fouls at an exceptional rate, and when he was aggressive here, he usually had a lot of success. He's got a pretty solid handle, he loves using push crosses, hezzies, and change of pace, and while he's not super dynamic or someone that's going to break you down, he gets where he needs to go, and based off his movement ability and some of the flashes, I think there's some untapped potential here. Now Arkansas has some very talented players, but as a unit, it was a pretty bad spacing situation. They shot 31% from three and even played two bigs at times, so it's reasonable to predict to look even better in its aspect with more driving lanes in an NBA offense. Play. Got a great feel for the game. When you can get downhill. And that's what he just did. Now Black trying to answer. And he did. <laughs> uh, Patrick Ewing wore an undershirt. Oh. Black with the drive. Again, I know I've said it all already. They need some scoring from their big guys. Look at this. Stumpen gives it back. Black. And a chance factor for the Razorbacks. Black is open off the baseline. In the Council's hands, three on one. Here's Black. Well, two hand flush. So here's Black. Brown chasing him down. Oh, my. One out for Council. He's got Black with him. Hey, Alley. He was also a pretty instinctual cutter when he was off the ball. Of course, he has the tools to finish at a high level here, and he did, but he also did a good job of reading plays and going back door as his defender's head was turned and just finding a gap in the defense to make himself available or drag his man and create an open look for a teammate. His feel and comfort for physicality was there on the glass. He wasn't afraid to mix it up and get extra opportunities offensively, and this is all part of his appeal off the ball as he hopefully continues to grow as a shooter. Oh, that was a fast 
can. There's a long shot, no good. It's retreat by Black. Black with a tip. Mitchell, as Jacob groves on him, missed the shot, but there's Black foul. Back to my conversation with, with Oscar, he said he, when he went to, to watch that out. Now defensively, Ant has a chance to be high impact and one of the more versatile guards in the league. He's got a great combination of size, foot speed, and overall feel to defend at the point of attack, make plays and help, and potentially even match up with three positions in the future. Starting off the ball, he's got very good feel and instincts in terms of rotations and positioning. He consistently came up with deflections and steals playing passing lanes, and he made an impact digging on the ball and help and creating turnovers one pass away or at the nail. And though he isn't exactly a rim protector, his feel for rotations at 6-7 did and should have him providing resistance at the bucket help side, which isn't always underrated ability for your guards and wings. Tendence of Frederick. All through the mismatch. Good. Hands by Black. Black. Yeah. Yes. And he's got a run up from behind. No. Can they do it consistently? Bell Ellis to his weak hand, forcing him to his left and then knocking the ball away. Yeah. Boy, they got the switch. And Debo Davis has done a great job on Hodge. Hodge not open for when the defense is shifting. And you're able to capitalize off of it. Brady Dick to close out by Black. Radford. Hog suit. That could be arranged. And that's a bucket list waiting to happen. Miller. It's a sack. And, and they move the basketball with multiple passes. They get really good shots. Joseph Yesafu. But he does have eight rebounds. Fierro on the attack. And at the point of attack or on the ball, he shined as well. He's laterally quick enough to stick with the more traditionally sized guards. He's got good anticipation. He's tough and recovers extremely well. Even when he would give up an advantage in certain spots, he never hesitated to use that cross step or turn and run. And that combined with the length made him a presence and hard to keep out of plays completely. His hands showed up here as well, coming up with the pokeaways or cookies. And then in the pick and roll, he had a lot of moments and was able to get back into plays and defend from behind, which is something that you look for. He still got some work to do in that getting screens but there was a lot to like overall while he wasn't perfect on this end he is someone i'm confident in making a real difference here in multiple ways season for this club either via the dribble or the pass black moving his feet well despite arkansas certainly has the ability oh man look at anthony black is just tormented connecticut's lead has been as big as 29 points tonight in arkansas black I like what they did there. They trapped with Warriors man. Took the ball out of the guard's hand. Couple of hard uh, screens. He got this team. game with an ankle injury at the three-minute mark of the first half. <laughs> it looks like Can I skip the game today, Mom? <laughs> just go to Tom's house for the sleepover. <laughs> Tanner Block cleaned up the mess inside the wash for the second. Walsh, another terrific freshman, the Gallows All America. Harris gets a step. Gives it his life. Barry Dunning, who makes his first start today as well. There is him. Now moving on to the improvement areas, the spot that's probably his biggest point of emphasis heading into the NBA is his three-point shooting. He shot just 30% on about two and a half attempts a game. The percentages dipped as the season went on. And in addition to that, he's on the slower side mechanically and it was pretty inconsistent, especially off the bounce. Now as funky as it looks at times, I do think it's workable off the catch and not nearly as far away as it can be described. And if he can make the defense respect him, it opens up his game in a big way. It attracts more closeouts for the drives, spaces the floor, ensures he can stay on the floor as a non-lead guard. And that's why it is important to his success. This season, with all the injuries, he said, I've never seen anything like it. CBA, NBA, nowhere. It has been until they proved that they could consistently do that. Black left his feet. They will find Davis right behind the back door. Johnson down his throw. And it's a three. Wow, tough catch in traffic. And the kick to Black. Got it. 
the big question for his game, and we alluded to it a couple times, is his ability to create shots for himself in a half court setting beyond that right hand drive, and even just doing that with more consistent assertiveness. The counters weren't fully there yet, he's not much of a threat on pull ups, as well as being able to punish unders and drop in the pick and roll, and transitioning cleanly from dribble to shot is a clear work in progress. He hasn't shown much in one on one situations, and if his drive got cut off, it led to some wild attempts or him picking up the ball, and there weren't too many other options he could go to. While we have plenty of examples of guards who find a way to be effective without some of this, and I think he could too, it's more about the role and responsibilities that he has because of it. There were a few flashes here, even some that really surprised me. I think the floater is probably the spot I'm most confident in him adding fully, but everything else is still kind of in there. You know how important these games are. Show hands the entire time. Does the do any good to flash without showing hands? Against the number one team in the country at the time. Defended here by I think that means he's still a lead eight final four good. Black back in, he fires a three, that's eight point lead. Black, the let him six, six Tyrell Ward matched up with him. Black stops and lets it fly. Yeah. I like the new V, by the way, at half court this year. Black, into that pack, there's just no daylight to get in the paint. Black, up and Here's Black. Floater in the lane. Got it. Another floater. Anthony, Anthony Black. Oh. Arriba para flotar el jump. 19 assists on 27 made baskets. For the game, Connecticut shooting 59%. Other than those two areas, there's not too much else I'm really concerned about. There's a few things defensively I think are worth mentioning. I think he can get a lot better in screen navigation, doing his work earlier, jumping to the ball and closing gaps, and also cutting out a few lapses, though I chalk a lot of that up to playing 35 to 40 minutes a night as a lead guard in the SEC. And then adding strength and weight here to fully unlock his versatility in guarding wings and more physical players will be to his benefit. There were times that he beat guys to the spot but was just discarded or taken out of plays, but with his frame I think this will happen in time. It was just noticeable at points. Miller guarded by Black. Length on length. And Miller's going to the free throw line. Here's Dennis. Made a little bit of space. Nice tie. Back to five. Black. Out of place. Hello. To the top. They found his wide open. And a whistle will stop it. AB is likely going to land somewhere towards the end of the top 10 to the end of the lottery with teams like Utah and Washington being some of the better landing spots, and if Houston has a rough lottery night, I think he'd make a lot of sense there too. At his best, I think he's somewhere in that high level starter range to slightly above that, with most of that being dictated by his shooting and ability to create in the half court. Realistically, it probably won't ever be full primary, but depending on where that goes, it could drastically change what his role is and he could end up exceeding some expectations. Now comparison wise, it's hard not to see the Josh Giddy in his game both positively and in things that they have to work on, but the difference in defense, athleticism, and passing level make that one just a little shakier, but it is definitely there. Finds another cut, it's winning. You're not expected to win and come away with a W. Yeah. Road kill for the Thunder. Is there a player that you watched a lot of film of? Is there a player that you're most looking forward to watching in these playoffs that maybe you have taken bits and pieces of their game from? Um, I mean, I like to watch a lot of Josh Giddy. He's like a tall playmaker, kind of similar. Anthony Black is one of the more talented players in this draft. While I have some questions about his shooting and ability to create for himself and what that means for the role that he plays on offense, his ability to defend and make plays with the potential to do more as a driver is tough to pass up at 6'7", and given the recent success of others with similar skill sets and improvement areas, he should still go pretty high for it.